Hello. Let's see if we can do this. I think I have a problem with my audio level, so let's see if I can fix that. And hey, if I have. Uh, all right, let's see if I can get rid of the echo, and hopefully that's good. The uh, the limited plan that I have for the day is to play around with something kind of mini camera ish, uh, logic programming kind of toys. Let's see if I can get all of my cameras and stuff set back up. I wasn't really. Uh, gentle when I left on vacation and everything's kind of a mess. Alright, I think that should kill the echo that I'm getting here. So, the thing I started uh, a couple of days ago was just mucking, or not really a couple of days ago, really this morning, um, was just started messing around with like writing a little mini Canron clone. I haven't gotten very far in it, uh, mostly because I'm just trying to build all the right pieces to see if uh, if I like it. And um, I figured I should actually probably be doing this on the stream rather than on my computer in an isolation where no one can see it and no one has any idea what I'm building and why. Um, the code is currently on GitHub. At Ikmet Guanchi. There's not much there. I'll flesh it out maybe a little more during the stream. I'll dump the URL. <clears throat> and um, right now what I'm doing is just trying to implement some of the stuff from the paper on triangular substitutions that... Um, a bunch of the mini Cameron folks have written. So let's see if I can find that. Yes. So I'm playing around with sort of this paper by Bender and Lindsay and uh, uh, Will Bird and Dan Friedman, et cetera, on efficient triangular substitutions. And I've just been kind of mucking around, so this is not my most focused bit, hence why it's kind of just goofing around with relations. I'm not really necessarily planning on building anything, but there's a lot of fun little code coming out here. Um, so, so far, what I've managed to build uh, um, is, let's see here. So I have a little uh, free category or uh, in the sense of the Reflection Without Remorse stuff. And uh, so all I built here is, let me blow this out or blow this out so you can see it. Um, some kind of type line sequence. So I have, you know, like uh, for viewing my sequences. So this will be used for uncons and stuff like where, where I need that intermediate type to be existential. I'm currently not using the bound library at all. Um, this will probably not use bound. I'm, I'm mucking around with uh, whether or not any of the triangular substitution stuff can be sped up with the reflection without remorse technique. Um, I don't know the answer, and that may well be thrown away. Um, so I've got my uh, type lined views, and then like cons and nil and uncons and unsnock, etc., for type line sequences. This is just sort of ad hoc overloading for the name so I can use them, building the notion of an opposite category. Um, I don't know that that's missing in base, but I, I didn't find it when I was thinking about it really quick. Um, and then like reversing containers. So I have a contain I can build a type line sequence that holds the opposite thing by reversing it. So building uh, the reversed category for it and the reversed nil Cons become snock, snock becomes cons, uncons becomes unsnock, etc. And then under that regime, we can build cons lists as thrists to steal a term from Connor McBride, <clears throat> which are either empty, in which case we go type line for any A to A. We can cons 
I'm leaving off anything that's not 01. So like this could be a category and all of that, but it's not going to be efficient. So I'm just not bothering. So there's no instances unless the operations are 01 in here. Um, and then an Okazaki style catenable queue. I was more or less just writing this lying in bed this morning. So um, I anticipate that there may be bugs. We'll see. Um, I should probably test something. Hmm. Um, I'm actually thinking about ripping this stuff out and like throwing it in backpack or something. That way I could get, I could parameterize the queue on the underlying list type. I could parameterize the catenable sequence on the queue type. Um, I don't know that it adds any value, but, so I'm debating about it. Um, at the moment, <coughs> I have everything completely monomorphized, <coughs> so it doesn't matter yet. But this kind of the code was kind of the kind of code that probably would have benefited from doing on stream, just because people would have seen me flail around at it, rather than see the completed artifact. Um, and then down here, I just have catenable lists. And so these give me 01 append, 01 cons and uncons, and 01 snock. Um, Erosin, what I'm doing today is just messing around with uh, relational programming, kata a la mini can run. I'm not quite sure where it's going to go. I'm uh, just back from vacation. I figured I would get my, or vacation. I'm back from traveling from conference to conference to conference, which is as evidenced by the fact that my voice is destroyed. Which means I probably shouldn't be doing a stream and destroying it further, but I am. Um, and so at the moment, the stuff we're looking at is um, goofing around with type line sequences and building the reflection without remorse machinery just in the repo. Um, Erosin, so the idea is, uh, so mini Canron is sort of a uh, relational programming model, kind of in the spirit of prologue, but maybe with a little bit different emphasis. Um, and I was hanging out with Will Bird at ICFP a lot. And uh, he kind of earwormed me with some of his problems, and I started thinking about it a bit. And so um, I brain dumped a bunch of my propagator stuff on him. He brain dumped a bunch of stuff about Mini Cameron on me. Um, <coughs> I was not a very good listener, so now I'm going to try and learn by implementing. So, the uh, as I dumped to the chat just beforehand, the uh, repo is at http github.com slash ecomet uh, guanqi, which is like Chinese for relationships. It's kind of that web of relationships between businesses and stuff like that. It has lots of extra connotations over and above. And sort of mainly because I've been off learning Chinese, I figured, well, if Canron is just Japanese for relation, I might as well use the closest I can come up with in Chinese, with my bad Chinese. Um, and we'll see if it goes anywhere other than Minicamon. Um, so at the moment I have these small catenable um, lists, and then to build the Reflection Without style, without Remorse style free monad, it holds on to um, kind of a more traditional free monad for some layer, or at least for one layer of F, and inside of it, it holds onto this free structure again. And I can view and unview. So reverse catenable list, so I have an efficient snock list here. <coughs> for Kleisley free arrows. So given given an arrow from A to B, I can pull out the I can pull out the heads the the, the first map I'm gonna apply to a thing. So I've got this. So one of the reasons I was thinking about this is that there was a comment in, uh, oh, uh, what is the advantage of relational programming? Well, one of the things is you can run uh, functions backwards. Like if you have a pend, you can like run it forward like you would normally run it, but you can also run it backwards. You can say, give me an input first half of the thing and the result and give me the, the result that would be the, the, the third part. You know, what I'm going to append to the first thing to get the second or the last, the result. Um, why I kind of got interested in this was there was a, um, so Will Bird wrote a relational interpreter for schemes, so he could just drop logic variables into scheme programs, which I thought was adorable. 
And then a couple of years ago, Gershon Bazerman sat down with him and they did, um, <coughs> they took Gershom's, um, dependent type checker that were just written directly in scheme. And they were able to run it backwards and like get type inference and get like program synthesis. Um, so this is basically a free monad in the um, in the usual sense, except for the fact that it has slightly faster. Um, so this is uh, in the free mo in the free library. There is a branch called categories, where I started building um, reflection without remorse style free, and I never did bother to package it up. <coughs> Man, my throat is gone. So I apologize for coughing into the microphone. And uh, with the with this, basically, you have sort of O1 access to the outermost Fs, and you have O1 bind. It's not like the reverse state monad, uh, Russian. It's uh, it's more like uh, how to describe it. Like being able to say, given the result of a function, give me all of the functions, like and, and an argument, give me all the functions that will compute that result, given that given that argument and stuff like that. You can do all sorts of crazy things. At least once you start doing that relational scheme interpreter bit. <coughs> so, um, uh, Will Will was complaining about the fact that, like, or not complaining, just sort of bemoaning the fact that all of the typed implementations of Mini Canron, I think, other than O Canron generally tend to have this flavor of building a big open sum type thing for whatever it is that they're going to work with as their syntax trees, and they don't really get to exploit the types. So I was curious to see if I could get there. <coughs> Man, my throat. This might, this might end fast. So Rev is in um, cat. All I did was flop the role of constant snock and nil and all that kind of stuff. So it's a cat and a list of the opposite category. A cat and a list of the opposite direction. So it's type line sequence. And so it composes the category in the other direction, but you use this const to implement snock and unconst to implement unsnock, etc. So it's cat that is the workhorse. Because cat gives me an O1 catnable type line sequence. And trying to remember how to do this was actually quite an exercise in frustration. So I've got that beast. Um, what else have I managed to build here? Um, so I had done the dynamization stuff, which we did on stream a few episodes ago. I had just been talking to somebody about it, so I had it like right in the source file. <coughs> Um, I basically have a cut and paste copy, more or less, of all of the code that's in the logic T repo, mostly because I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to mangle any of this stuff. So I've just I've got my own local copy of everything here. Let's look at um, the cat repo. Let's look at thrist and work our way down. So with thrist, I have, I'm either nil or I have a, like a, this is like a list, but where the types align in the middle. This is like, basically, a, this is like a free category. I've got the arrow that I'm going to compose for the, the result and the arrow I'm going to compose for the, the head here. Like I could make an instance of category. I might as well fill these extra things in for thrist f, where it is nil and where <laughs> um, what do I want to do here? I want to do something like nil dot x's is x's, I think. And x's dot nil is nil. There's x's. And then we'll do something where we do uh, um, do, 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 do. let's do the usual induction principle. X cons x onto x's dot cons y's is cons x onto x's dot y's, right? This is kind of the standard list append story, but I don't need this nil. <coughs> <coughs> hmm. 
man. Let's make that strict in the spine. That way, this is a finite list of some sort. And uh, nil is cons, nil cons, uncons dumps it in this view thing. And uh, yeah. And then down here I have like a Q. So this is, uh, I have efficient snock and efficient un uncons. This uses like a trick from Ocus Hockey. Normally this is like uh, QA is Q of list of A's, list of B's. This is reversed and this is forward. Um, an example of F could be just function arrow. But anything that has like two type indexes would work as long as I just want to chain them together where the types line up. So the, the, the Q here is basically this Q plus an extra list here that is being used to slowly reverse this and append it to here at the right time. So this was in Okazaki. <coughs> Uh, you don't actually need a profunctor. It doesn't need to be functorial at all. And so Atsy Vanderplug wrote a paper called Reflection Without Remorse, and it used this approach. As a matter of fact, is there an example in Reflection Without Remorse of a logic T? We said there is. I might use it instead of the real logic T. Asmonetic reflections. <coughs> yeah, so he's got a monad logic, which does this thing. So I might actually try and use the reflection without remorse logic T rather than just use the... This is me playing around with reflection without remorse a lot. Um, my... Uh, free monad looks a lot like this. This pure or impure or free mo uh, f of free monad. And then extended. So let's see if I can find his logic T implementation. Monad logic. Do do do. Ask him he's in the glass, applying our thing to M plus. So this is one of the things I'm hoping. And yeah, I have uh, logic T, let's go to the logic code here. So right now I'm using the code from Logic T that's pretty close to the stuff that uh, Dan Dole has implemented. And I only vaguely remembered that there was something in the Reflection Without Remorse paper for a better Logic T. So I'm going to maybe mess around with building that instead of this. Um, Mictor Logic copy Logic.hs to Logic Desk class or something like that. 
Let's build the monad logic code once and for all, and then ignore the logic t bits that I had. So all of this was peculiar to the thing. Man, my throat is gone. Okay, so I've got everything I want here. View type check. All right. View type check with wall. Tell me about the classes. State class, error class, identity. Applicative and foldable. this out strict lazy strict lazy This is like co-density of this funny MR to MR-ish thing. So if you're familiar with that. Like if I built new type G endo, M R is G endo, MR to MR. Then this logic T, M is co-density of G endo. Um, so this is clearly a monad because code density of anything is a monad. Just so you're wondering <clears throat> where all the instances come from. That's the original Oleg logic T. Um, and then beyond that, I just have a little pattern synonym for converting back and forth. This is something I'm actually... Kind of, wish it, kind of wishing we would do to the MTL, like make the uh, reader, writer, etc. Um, things in the pattern synonyms, because then we could do this. And you wouldn't actually have to know that, like between MTL1 and MTL2, we removed all the synonyms. <coughs> but this would rely on using newer GHC features, so that might be a bit of a non-starter. So I have all the instances and a bunch of code. So I wonder if I can use the reflection without remorse bits. Let me grab some kind of thing and maybe clear my throat. <coughs> all right. <clears throat> so I have logic T. Now refactored in two modules. Maybe I should make a little uh, cabal file so I can actually build this thing. D2 clause or Apache uh, what's the I guess this is technically relational. Uh, 
description has to be longer than the synopsis. Build type simple. Tested with nothing. I don't have any of this crap. Source repository head. I've at least already uploaded it. No custom setup, no flags. <coughs> Independent transformers in the MTL. Transformers, which version am I on? MTL. MTL 2.2. So far, so good. I don't have a source directory. It's all local. None of this crap. So it looks like it's a <coughs> build depends base. Yeah, it's, it's basically the logic T list T done right, more or less just CPS. So the question is now that we have this better logic T from reflection without remorse, can I just implement it in terms of the free monad stuff that I have and all this catenable stuff? Or not the question, but a one of many questions. So we have cat, we have free. We have logic and we have logic dot class. Will that build? Let's see what I'm missing. so I can have the efficient base case. Non-exhaustive pattern, cat 130. All right, we compile warning free. <clears throat> I'm starting to build a bunch of skew binary random access list stuff, but in this in a different style, and I'll explain that in a second. So the other thing that I have here is something that I'd started building in an old um, library for unification. So one of the things that Mini Canron does a lot is a lot of unification. And uh, the 
trick that I'm trying to use here is like, give me the ability to try and zip two structures and tell me where I need to keep going. Um, and so given this unified class, I believe I can do like a free monad of things that are unified to build my unifier. So this is like, the only thing that's gonna use out of alternative is the ability to do empty or empty. So if you know how to like basically zip up the elements, I can zip up the trees that contain those elements. And then I have a bunch of machinery for doing generic programming on that. So it will automatically build it. So that's the other thing I've got. I haven't put into the guanchi dot. Free TM pair? <coughs> what about free TM pair? I don't actually have a free T here. I just have free. I didn't bother to build a free T, but it's not earth seekingly bad. Understand your point, minute. Sorry. Oh, I have not actually thought about that problem yet okay merge what do i have wrong here functor f from the use of view why do i need a functor for f Uh, thanks, Puff and Fresh. I'm just back from traveling, so I'm trying to see if I can stream. Given the fact that my voice is gone, I'm not quite sure how well this is going to go. I'm actually going to need efficient access to the left-hand side of it, so I don't know that the monoid -E version of it is actually better in this case. A minute. Dine's done. <coughs> All right, so I've got unified. I'm happy with that. Okay, so this is the CPS. I don't know that I can reassociate it because it's going to be infinitely deep in places. I mean, the whole point of Logic T was the fact that it played this fair interleaving game. So the first channel got like half the effort and the next one got half of that and half of that and half of that. Um, and so it's one of the things that Mini Cameron uses a lot of. So I'm not really in a hurry to mess with that secret sauce. Well, hello, Cobalt. <coughs> well, 
wonder if I can just steal this thing. So I have an M, and maybe a M. M split is just lift M. How does the M split of that work? Monad plus, show the large class, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is the beast that I want to implement. To an arbitrary monad, functional parallel systematically derives, da, 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 effectively their implementation M split corresponds to converting different lists and converting back. Standard stream implementation of backtracking. as shown in figure seven. This implementation, the NL is essentially a list where each node, oh okay, yes, so this is just list T. <clears throat> uh, right now what we're doing is we're just messing around with logic programming. We're trying to build up some of the machinery that uh, Will Bird and Dan Friedman and Oleg Kiselyov and those folks have built up inside of Minicanron. They do a lot of it in Scheme. There's been various ports to Haskell. I'm kind of mucking around with like a slightly different bag of tricks. You know, kind of doubling down on the types a little more. We'll see if it goes anywhere. I'm not quite sure. Um, so right now the thing that I have is on GitHub you commit at Guan Chi. I'm not mingling that pronunciation too terribly. Um, and yeah. Oh, Object.cps, let's start there. And yes, I've had, well, I've been on the road for like, 30 some days or something and I got sick like a week and a half into it and I've just not really recovered since what am I missing what else am I missing this new style and old, I can edit it. Uh, The skew stuff is not done, and is the old end. All right. And I'm just down to the one file that I haven't actually committed, but I'm still fiddling with. All right. So um, where were we? We have our our fancy free category stuff, where that's O1 appendable and O1 snockable and unsnockable. We've got our free monad built on top of it. <coughs> Let's build the reflection without remorse logic T. And
This is just the list you done right at that point. Why am I using the single hero? Because he's using it down there inside the guts. Single A takes an A to a M of maybe A logic T M A. Zero is, uh, I'm just going to use empty. This just thing holding on to paying for the maybe tail thing. So maybe I should do a LMA is going to be uh, mill or cons a logic T M A. M of LMA. There, it'll save one indirection, not that it matters. And uh, what am I going to do here? So this is return const A empty. And this guy is going to now be a nil. Said too. Uh, deriving functor. good. Empty is and then this is M plus. This is a MLA case nil becomes run now cons head tail becomes pure just a 
is this const now? Const h m plus tv. <clears throat> Logic t is minor transformer. Lift m is ml. Find a single. We have the class in this library already, M split. Using a reflection on top of force. And we have to build the observed machinery on top of this. Adapted ML monad is included in the code accompanying this paper. Where's the code accompanying this paper? Because this is the raw, fucked up one. Um, you know what? I know a leg and Etsy vendor plug. Uh, Code company in the paper. Hey, check it out. <coughs> logic bench reflect. Just give me the logic T. Fix logic. So he has a catenable Q of M. CQ is fast CQ. Why is that viable? So he just uses the cat number Q. He doesn't use the type of line sequence at all for this. Fast GQ, this is just unaligned. figure out the uh, thing we want. Right now we have this cat thing.
is going to be naive. It's going to be like A. TA, TA, TA. I don't need the opposite things at all. I have the dual monoid, but that doesn't matter. I need to need to swap these things. This is just going to be. I can just bolt instead of rev. I can just use dual. Semi-group. I don't need to opt the elements before I put them in. They just become whatever they are. So now the dual of a thing can be used as a container that works in the opposite direction. Rev here is dual. Hey, Oliver. is to op use dual and that should probably work don't need to op anything thrists are now just lists of A's. I really should have just started from uh... this stuff. Probably not. I do not want this stuff enriched over anything. You can almost always bake it into your F. Or, well, I guess you can't here. You're screwed. But this is going to be used for like environments and things like that. I'm going to be using. Oh, I get. Oh, so I, I. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're trying to think about this in terms of um, the free monad stuff, maybe. Uh, I hope not. I'll leave it th at that. I have a dual list of A. I have a list of A. Avoid this hack. <clears throat> Save some 
vocabulary here. Snock Q. Snock works in the R. That's fine. You are a thrist, but now you're a list of A's. You're a reverse list of A's, which is now dual. You are a list of A's. You are a queue of A's. You are now a list of A's. Reverse list of A's. A list of A's, and we lost all of our types. On the other hand, I could just turn around and do all of this. I mean, I could just make a thing that just t took any monoid and built a category out of it, uh, built a thing that ignored two arguments for it. I could use my other cat for this. <clears throat> I don't know that this adds any value duplicating all this code. It's kind of making me uncomfortable, actually. Yeah, fuck it. We'll keep going. Reverse catenable this, catenable A. This is uh, This is a, a, a Q of cat A, cat A, turn to cat A. This is a Q of cat A's. It'll be a cat in a list of A's. And now my nil instance for cat, uncons for cat, cons for cat, singleton snock for cat. I think I'm done. Oliver, I agree. Uh, Gretz, yeah, I'm not, I, I agree with Ollie. I, I tend to just kind of flail on this stuff for a little while and see if I like it. list of A's. I mean, all of the, this stuff here, right, in this form, this is basically an Okazaki, so. I guess I just call this unaligned. Shutting complete. More bike shutting.
tags on anything anymore. Tool wise. Do I have Audible Bell going? I should have Visual Bell. I do need a dual thing, darn it. list of a one more argument Okay, we have unaligned sequences. All right, <clears throat> hopefully that'll all work. on something stupid. Uh, cons one, cons two, cons three, no, one, two, three, as a catenable list of, what is it, a catenable int. I didn't build the show.
Yeah, looks good to me. Also looks good to me. Control that by Funker or data by Funker, I don't remember. Traverse FG doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Putting all this together, and I think we're looking good. Okay, so we've got um, FG pure map by traversable. Which part was standalone derivable? Oh, was it because of the uh, the refactoring of the hierarchies uh, in the, from GADTs into the other? Does it actually need polygons? This one doesn't need polygons. The other one needed it. Good to me. All right, uh, driving your foldable. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do not use this. Do not use this. Do not use this. Danger, 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 Will Robinson. I don't want these things to be foldable and traversable because then you're going to use the wrong asymptotics, so don't bother. Yes, I should give, implement all the operations, but right now I'm limiting myself to things I know I can do fast. Uh, maybe the main thing, um, the main thing we're doing right now is playing around with a little bit of logic programming. We haven't gotten to the logic programming bits. We're building a lot of scaffolding. general goal here is to get to a sort of mini Canron clone or something like that. Maybe using a lot of reflection without remorse, which is a paper by Etsy Vanderplug and Ole Kasayev. Hopefully it'll work. I have no idea.
This is mostly me getting back into the stream of things, uh, 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 the swing of things after my uh, trip for ICFP. Sorry, you don't like my terminal color, Mibsy. It mutes it just a little bit from white, so I don't have to go quite so blind staring at it. Paychecks. All right, so that's been pushed. Um, hmm. Where are we at so far? We're trying to see if we can build a nice logic monad using the machinery from Reflection Without Remorse, which implemented an unaligned queue explicitly for logic T. Where's his logic thing fixed? Logic. Fast cat number Q. So you have the cat number Q of these M's. <clears throat> so logic T is a, 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 the idea behind logic T is it's a monad transformer for like streaming calculations where you're like gonna be working with lists except now you have some underlying monad and you're going to be doing lots of interleaving of fair interleaving of conjunction and disjunction. This is a thing that um, came up in an old paper from Oleg and Ken Sean and some other folks. And uh, Atsy Vanderplug wrote a paper called Reflection Without Remorse, which is a technique that I'm trying to use over and over and over again here just to see if I like it again. Every once in a while I try out old ideas and then dust them off and see if I if I have changed my opinion in the in the meantime, so right now I am doing a bunch of things that all look like reflection without remorse. So let me see if I can do them uh, that way. Um, well, it's basically saying something like if we drop this cat number Q thing, I have a monadic layer of effects, and then I have either uh, uh, I have a either nothing or I have the next element, and I have another layer of effects. Um, so in some senses, it's sort of the, there was a article I think on Haskell.org called List T Done Right. And so this this thing has that same structure. I have a M of a nil or a cons. Um, so logic T is used for logic programming a lot because like if you're doing something like uh, forking off and doing like a prologish kind of search or something like that, it's better to have some kind of fair interleaving. That way, even if you have lots of things that are going to take forever, you get to explore the rest of the search space. Um, so in that sense, that's, I guess, the connection. Um, actually, 
actually I can just take I'll just grab this code and change it and mangle it and mangle it and mangle it and mangle it. Blah. singleton I've got that view is my uncons this is my and h bound to lambda case I don't need that nothing is now my nil and this is my cons i I still have my new I have my data type LMA, which is nil, or cons A, logic T, M, A, and LMA. On logic T, that thing gets me out of layer. Logic T, singleton. Going to take an LMA to or an M of L M L A Ugh. M of LMA to logic two. This is M of LMA. And in my parlance elsewhere in my code. This, let's make this line up with the, the other things that I had written earlier. All right, now that looks like cons high onto Logic T, TI, where did TI come from? Oh, this is matching. Cons high onto Logic T, TI. Logic T, this is the uh, pen, which in my world is just that. And this is not a return just, this is return cons high. All right, that's easy. Single looks like the other single that I had. Single takes an A and gives me back an M of LMA. Given a monad M. And this is not a just, it's now a cons A, and this is empty. Da da, cons monad logic TM. I agree that logic TM is a monad. Yes. Driving functor foldable traversable. Driving functor foldable and traversable somehow. Probably not. So there's an interleave operation that's in monad logic that does the fun, funny interleaving. So the append the um, angle bracket or is still unfair, but we're slightly fairer if you use the interleave operation. So it makes it possible to have that thought. View logic t cons logic t da 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 unview single view I 
guess I can go with the deep iron. Not that bad. And this is a lambda case again. This is now a nil. The cons head tail. Um, this is an or. right that looks right fail still is in monad is the as of the version i'm in monad plus HT for cat two logic T's is logic T with these things offended. That's fine, but now monad plus is just uh, m0 equals empty. We have monad, we have logic t, we have monad plus. <coughs> we have lift and all of this in its full glory. This fits with my existing Vocabulary, let's kill the random prophylactic parentheses. So what's a logic going to look like? It's a I'm not even gonna bother to name logic. Logic TMA. Observe all, observe T. Observe many. and then there's the lifting of stuff over logic T. I want the traversable and foldable instances. I think this is sound directly to steel. Fold map's wrong. Run logic is also wrong. Screw up. Lambda case. Hey, 
and yeah, I could probably implement all of the control uh, or the data functor list stuff or the data list stuff. Identity. Not traversable cat. So let's see here. Um, uh, Chris Creek, that's actually one of the reasons why I do that conspicuously lowercase language is just to show people that pragmas are not stuck screaming at you. I have to admit, Ollie, if that is the only thing you've learned from me, I feel like I have done something terribly wrong. a couple windows on the other screen so I can see the chat. I use unpack in lowercase because it's a lot quieter. <coughs> um, let's see here. That's all good. We were in logic fast. Not traversable. Okay, I was adding uh, traversable to unaligned. And accepting the fact that that was going to make me suffer quite a bit. Because rev needs to be traversable in the opposite order. And it already exists that we have something that's traversable in the opposite order. is the applicative in the opposite order, but we have uh, foldable and traversable process the elements in the opposite order. So what I'm thinking about doing is this. Do we have a semi-group that flops this thing around? I would have to orphan a semi-group. I don't want to orphan a semi-group for reverse. Okay, fine. I'll duplicate it. Uh, basically, we're just playing around with uh, programming a la Minicanron, which is sort of a, it's a logic programming framework for uh, just sort of like reversible computing and whatnot. Um, you can use it, like it was originally written, and they could use it to solve little like, you know, the man in the yellow house who lives next to the horse kind of puzzles. Um, and it's gotten a little more industrial strength since then. Uh, a little while ago... Gershom was able to run a his type checker for a 
dependent type system backwards and like generate some terms in a relational scheme interpreter that was written by Will Bird. And driving via could probably help a lot. It's basically a prologue-ish. We want to try and get away from cut as much as possible. But the prologue-ish mindset is is uh, the r one way to think about it. So the prologue tends to be like a de is like a depth first dive through the space of possible things to do. Um, Mini Cameron is kind of not quite a breadth first search, but a little bit fairer um, using this uh, mixture of uh, interleaved and uninterleaved searches for things. And my screen behind me got bumped by my. I think that's why there was a funny little glow. Um, so traversable is going to be something like this. See where traverse f is going to be get dual. Something like rev. Reverse the backwards F. How's the traverse work? I'm just still look out for this. Forwards and backwards are going to use the type that's in control applicative backwards. Uh, probabilistic programming is uh, not so well related. There's like, I mean, with with probabilistic programming, you're basically trying to like draw samples according to some kind of probability distribution that you're calculating by saying, let's do a bunch of random steps along the way. And then you can do all this Markov chain Monte Carlo stuff. Uh, the first stream that I did here was actually starting to build towards probabilistic programming. But then everybody else kind of wanted to go a different direction, so we did. Don't drive traversable, thanks. Don't drive foldable, thanks. You can drive funky, that's safe. Helps to actually tell it that it's traversable. Get dual. cat is usable and I was using that in something logic fast he set up GHG ID or something like that quorum G seem to be <coughs> but I haven't had logic fast to the project yet so far logic dot reflection that is true that does not match the name lambda case and logic naive 
because we didn't finish this. have exactly two. That's the data type. Now the new type. LMA with maybe. all the naive stuff. Oh, wait. <coughs> <coughs> um, M split lift. We didn't. I have to make this thing a functor. I don't actually need to map over this last list. Yoko, we're uh, currently playing around with logic programming. We haven't quite gotten there yet. We're just sort of building a lot of scaffolding for um, Okasaki style type class, or Okasaki style like data structures in Haskell. So all sorts of things that have the right asymptotics for all the operations I want. And then maybe we'll get around to stringing them together at the end. Uh, we'll see if my voice holds out that long. <coughs> maybe I should have taken some kind of Expectorant or something to get this stuff out of my throat earlier today. Um, A's, B's, C's. You know, I can just drive. 
No, I can't because I have to ignore this last list. Ah, I have to ignore that last list. I can't because I need to know that this is the same list. Er, this really should be like existentially B, and then I could have a cheaper funker. If I really wanted to be an origin of this F map, should probably remove these things into here as it does it. And that way this list is empty. <coughs> because I have to touch them all in order to F map. This kind of shows some of the problems with this nicer uh, uh, logic T, doesn't it? Because we're starting to see that we'll have fast pens but the binds are going to be expensive this is the same problem that i ran into when i was starting to play around with using uh, reflection without remorse for machines we could get one of those things to be fast but not the other and uh, these are based on what you're allowed to observe about the data structure you just can't see the inside of q i'll just hide its, I'll hide its constructors <coughs> there's a reason why i was skipping the instances earlier Map F, uh, fuck it. Uh. Yep. That list that exists so that we can slow the reversal from this list into this list, making it worst case asymptotics rather than uh, amortized. It really should be like a like lazy gnat or something like that, that forcing each one of the elements forces the spine of the list they came from. But right now it's because of that. By making it a list of A's, I can make it a little bit cheaper in the common case. idea is that demanding more and more of that list demands the reversal.
Where did I miss a bracket? We need bracket. I don't know where I left it. If you see it, let me know. Yes, prime. That looks plausible to me. <coughs> Is list Q. No foldable cat. <coughs> Twenty five. Where are we? Unview. Expected two more. Project T. MA. 26, what did I lose? screw up? Logic T dot single. No, logic T dot singleton. Singleton comes from unaligned, that's true. Did I not export it from unaligned? I didn't. class 30 maybe a with the jury now a nil 37 maybe a with LMA where am I got a maybe or nil and then do duplicative should be alternative. I don't know why it doesn't have all the list instances, mainly because I didn't write them. That's fine. <coughs> Did not do uh, view, uh, return nil. 62. M split view M. change the logic T here to use the view thing so I can get rid of this random shuffle all over the place. Lift.
This looks plausible. All right. Fast works. I want to rewrite all that in terms of view, but that's another problem for another moment. Okay, let's fix that. I don't like the all the noise of flopping in and out of maybe, and I screwed up already because I um, logic fast doesn't need its own data type. We already have view, which is already exactly what I want. stay here for a second and commit this. Okay, so we have a reflection without remorse based logic T. So now I have the backtracking monad that I could theoretically work in. Hopefully it'll be fast because, you know, they wrote papers on it. <clears throat> um, we're going to need to get to environments pretty soon. And yeah, okay. So I need to take a couple minutes and get an Eye Coke or something and. Maybe try and get my, some of this junk out of my throat. I'll be right back and we'll pick up from there.
right, let's try this again. Um, hmm. Make sure everything's committed. This is me starting to work on building environments, but I think I just set it against this element thing. <clears throat> so what is this? This code here was me starting to build the environments that are used to track um, substitutions. When we're play, when Mini Canron plays around within uh, substitutions, they're not like we typically do inside of GHC or most of the compilers that I've worked on where you're having unification variables uh, hold on to IO refs or something like that. We're actually doing this in a functional manner. And so you have uh, environments that reference older things in the environment in theory. Um, the description of this, they called it triangular substitution. Hold on, what do we have here? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see what we can do here. I want to find what is going on here. Um, triangular substitution. Triangular substitution. Nope, not trigonometric substitution. That's a whole different bag. Efficient representations for triangular substitutions. This is an article or a paper by Bender, Cooper, etc. I mentioned it very br briefly at the beginning of the stream, which has been admittedly fairly incoherent so far. Um, and they started out with a sort of naive encoding of substitutions, where they're just like representing them as lists. Dot here is the notation in Scheme for putting two things together into a cons. So they have, you know, substitution that x points to y, y points to z, z points to 3. So if you look at z x, you're going to get 3. <clears throat> And so things should be referencing older things in the environment. And that way you would know that you don't have infinite cycles because you have well-formed environments. Um, I've kind of been thinking about this because there was some stuff I was playing around with for sort of mangling uh, environments with explicit substitutions. And I'm not sure how much of that I can get away with here or what, but it would be interesting to play with. So this, this article kind of describes sort of the difference between idempotent substitutions where you have no variables that uh, when you walk, like uh, you don't have any variables that you have to find that you'll have to keep walking. And triangular substitutions where you, you were, where you will. And they made it that sort of reference to the sort of trade-off that you have to pick one or the other. And it feels very Reflection Without Remorse to me that maybe you could do the same things that Reflection Without Remorse did to make all of this other stuff go fast. Well, fast. Um, to make it all go, uh, oh, at least on an advertised basis, fast. Or on an asymptotic basis, fast. Um, and see if I could do something where I can push down through the environments using Reflection Without Remorse. Um, I admit my thoughts on this are pretty loose at this point. It was mostly a stream of consciousness on the flight back. And like I said, I just wanted to get back into the habit of streaming again. So here I am. Um, hmm. So the naive walk that they have here is running through in a loop and checking to see if they found a variable, if, if it's not, or if it's empty, or if they, if, if, they, if, if, they, if they haven't found a variable or if they're at the end of the list. Um, run through and loop over and over again. And they go through a series of refinements to this plan. Um, basically, the end result of that is that they build a skew binary random access list in order to make it faster to, to navigate. And so, I mean, this is kind of obvious trick if you've spent a lot of time thinking about Okasaki. Um, if not, maybe not. <laughs> and then they do this deferred thing with the uh, skew binary random access lists where they um, reserve the place whenever they extend the environment, but they don't actually put anything there until they actually have an assignment. 
And uh, the thought that I had when playing with this was you could um, how did I describe this? Uh, you could be a little bit lazier than their deferred skew binary random access list if your skew binary random access list wasn't necessarily a full tree but just was left as a stub until you walk you needed to walk down and uh, make a child <clears throat> at least that's, that was the thought I had that got me even thinking about doing anything at all um, I ran to mention it to Wilbur at the very end of ICFP and he had already left for his plane so I haven't had a chance to talk to him um, so I would, I would suspect that one should be able to get a little bit of extra performance here. Maybe not much, because if this was really careful, you could probably do the repeated doubling with sharing for the um, intermediate representations for those things. And it shouldn't help, or it shouldn't help much more than a log, in uh, worst case on some uh, operations or something. Um, so this is the code that's at the end of the paper. Let me dump the link to the paper in the chat. So I had some thoughts. One was this thing, which was that I could be lazier in the construction, <coughs> even in their deferred version. And the other one is that I wrote a little post on using Leonardo numbers. on the school of Haskell like two, two and a half years ago. And this article, uh, let me, it was the wrong link. Let me give you this link, much better link. And um, <coughs> so this number, this thing is based on a recurrence that is like the Fibonacci sequence, except you add one at every step. And it's possible to do the same trick that makes a skew binary random access list go by using this structure. <coughs> so why is it interesting at all? It turns out that um, if you were to use this scheme instead of the skew binary random access list scheme, which is just a little bit different, um, you get much of, you get basically the exact same guarantees you get out of a skew binary random access list except you also get that the, the trees are slightly lopsided. Now that sounds really dumb. Until you go read um, a paper by Gerth Stolting Brodal, which I think I probably referenced. Um, that it's works out better if you skew your binary trees a little bit because then you get uh, branch prediction benefits. Um, and so you wind up with a skewed binary random access list um, lifting some of the early stuff up to the closer, closer to the root and some of it down a little further um, which maintains the kind of same expected depth but which skews things so that the branch predictor might be a little better. At least that was the idea. Now there are improvements on runtime are about in the order of 15%. I'm not quite perfectly skewed, so maybe 10%. So it's not a particularly earth-shaking win. So I'm not going to go after the Leonardo random access list stuff because it's really kind of a pain in the neck to do. <coughs> and when I built it up, I built it up off of the recurrence that makes uh, the Fibonacci numbers go. Um, and there, Edgar Dykstra wrote up uh, some uh, uh, paper, or not a paper, uh, one of his write-ups, you know, his many, many treaties online on something he called smooth sort that used the same recurrence. So it's not entirely novel to use it for something. Smooth sort that had the property that it kind of smoothly decayed from n to n log n <clears throat> as your list was more and more out of order. All right, so 
my thought with the skew binary random access list was to build a, a, binary, a skew binary random access list as normal. Oh, that's not a source window. It just happens to have the right shade. Um, except instead of always having values, maybe take them away. So normally what I would do is I would build something like data tree A is either bin A, tree A, tree A, or tip. And I would use tip A, so I would have leafy trees. And then I would have a list A is a linked list of trees where the trees are all of ascending scientists, except you can have two of the smallest size. This would be the usual skew binary random access list implementation. And it becomes something as simple as cons A onto a list or cons I X cons J Y Z's is if I equals J, then this is cons build a new layer I plus J plus one of bin a x y z's otherwise we do cons a x's is cons one tip a x's <clears throat> now this is a clearly a one to cons we don't actually do anything that skews the tree um or we don't do anything that is recursive here and then it turns out that it's O log to navigate because my trees are constantly getting larger, except the first two are allowed to be the same size. And this tends to, this has an exact, uh, unique shape for any number of elements, etc. cetera. Um, the version I'm trying to do here allows for the fact that I'm going to often be building these things without any substitution. So I want to create the slot, but not actually do any work. And um, in Minicanron, they call these things like they, they build birth substitutions, which is that they don't even bother to extend the thing. But then when they need to push out to a given point to, to create it, they have to create all of the stuff up until that point. So their deferred execution, skew binary random access list, list implementation is a little less deferred than their skew binary random access list, their, their base one. Um, the thought that I had was that I could leave some portions of the tree undone. So that's why my tips no longer have values in them because I'm no longer building complete trees that are always at least uh, that always have contents. My binary nodes may or may not have access. So rather than have a bin, maybe I just have a bin and a bin underscore that doesn't. And I maintain the invariant that I, if I have, <clears throat> if I was going to use a bin underscore of tip tip, then I just use a tip. And the idea would be that when you go walking down, the moment you encounter a tip, um, you don't even need to keep searching. And then we'll do the same birth substitution tricks, et cetera, that Mini Cameron does. I don't know. Uh, maybe it'll work. It seemed plausible to me. So we here we have the trees that have been hacked up. Spine works just like before. And now the environment keeps track of um, how many variables we've told you we have. And uh, this is how many variables are in the spine. And I want to be able to give you things like, here's the ability to allocate n variables at a time. And I'll give you the updated environment. So this is where I was right before I decided that I should come on stream and maybe do this live rather than do this and then have to explain it after the fact because... At least now there's video and someone could do some archaeology to figure out what the hell I was talking about. <coughs> um, so consing a single element. Um, the idea here is like if I want to allocate I elements and I have an environment, let's say JK X's, if I is... <clears throat> uh, how do I want to do this? I ultimately want to say, like, if I actually have things that need to go into the, the first node of the tree, I want to push them there. Otherwise, I want to allow for whole trees to be missing at the front. <clears throat> 
It's only when I go to constant element onto a tree that's been missed, the stuff that's missing, that I have to actually kind of manufacture this, this fix up. I mean, I guess what we can do is we can just make it so that allocate starts out as a repeated, like, const underscore or something. And then we'll maybe try and bird our way to the correct code. Uh, these now have types. When I first was doing this, I was thinking about backpacking the element type. But that was going to prevent me from doing anything where I got clever about slowly pushing these things down. Functor, foldable, traversable, that's all fine. Env also should be fine. To uh, Minip or whoever else made the joke about it being lowercase, I will lowercase the unpacks. <sighs> Cons A. Let's take an A to an environment A to an environment A. We have an environment full of A's. Do we have a repeat or something? Do we have an action that does, uh, uh, I guess we can, re I can replicate, um, the semi-group has an S times, right? I don't, I really hate take that iterate. It's so horrible. I can do S times in a monoid N times using endo some function and then app endo. Not that it's going to gain any performance over It's just going to get sharing of functions. It's not going to actually help. <clears throat> so we'll at least get this to be correct. Cons is n of i plus 1, j plus 1, cons onto the spine a. Cons underscore here, y plus one. Oh yeah, I have an I have an actual type for the spines now. Because we use that little bin constructor. This is just now a tip. <coughs> and this should helpfully get the logic working. Uh, hi, Gluttonous. Uh, sorry, this is a bit of a deep dive. Um, if you've never seen a skew binary random access list, the idea here is um, I'm counting in a funny binary like number system, except I'm allowed to use 0, 1, and 2. I'm not counting in trinary. Uh, 2 is only allowed in the least significant non zero position. And my digits are worth a 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. So that means that my digits are worth. My, I have a 1's place, I have a 3's place, I have a 7's place, I have a 15's place. So they're like 1 less than a power of 2, unlike the usual 
binary, which is powers of two. <coughs> and so with that, then I have numbers that look like, you know, zero, one, uh, two, and then to put a three, I have to put a one, zero, one, 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 two, two, zero, one, zero, zero. So what's interesting about this is that if I increase this by one, I only ever carry by one place. Like if I were to ignore the zeros at the bottom. So there's only one place worth of carrying going on in my form of addition, of my form of increment. And so that's used in this cons operation, which has this, this kind of shape that I have a spine. Let's look at this. This is looking from the least significant digit upward, or the least significant non-zero. We're skipping the zeros. And... Uh, Um, we're not allowed to have zeros in the in the middle. We're only allowed to have like ones and twos. So we have like a prefix of zeros and we have ones and twos and then we have a zero. So it's a bit of a weird beast. You're allowed to have trees of a, like basically what you have is each one of these things is the size of a complete tree of a given height. So a complete tree of height one has one element in it. A complete tree of height two has three elements in it. Height three has seven elements, 15 elements inside of four. And so you have a bunch of trees. Each of the tree is of, are of increment of increasing size, except you're allowed to have two of the smallest size of uh, tree that you have. Then you can show that this operation for consing will maintain that invariant. It will, um, I have a complete tree of size I, a complete tree of size J, J is it greater than or equal to I. Um, if I is equal to J, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new tree of one size larger. But then I knew that the next size up, I only had at most one, and so now I've at most got two of them. Um, so that's the general idea of it. It's a bit obscure. It's in Chris Okasaki's book called Purely Functional Data Structures. I sometimes feel like my blog or my broadcast here is a uh, repeated advertisement for it. This is his PhD thesis, which is a version. I mean, it's got, a, I think, almost all of the content that his book does. But if you go to Amazon, the book here is very well worth reading. And it includes um, a Haskell appendix that implements the data structures in Haskell if you don't want to try and read his made-up dialect of lazy ML with polymorphic recursion. I hope that helps a bit. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm doing now is I'm allowing some of the nodes to be missing instead of actually being there and uh, normalizing the tree so that I can get out early because I expect to have a relatively sparse random access list where I've made the positions for everything, but I haven't necessarily put content in them. Consi plus J, tip. So the idea here is that eventually this will say how many elements the tr like the list is this long, but it should be I elements long, and I will just not do anything until I have to. And then I'll extend it. Um, and then the goal is to like extend it with just empty trees, where so I can just walk the, the portions of the trees I need. Spine underscore X's. So allocate here and cons underscore are placeholders that are hopefully giving the right behavior. <clears throat> then the goal will be to do something like this look up, you give me an integer position, and I will look in the environment for that position. Um, and what I'll probably do is make this be a lens that gives me back a maybe A, and you're just not allowed to ask out of range or something. I realize it sounds evil, um, but by doing it that way, I can uh, maintain, uh, how to put it, I don't, ex I, uh, my use case will not index out of bounds. 
because I'll be supplying the variables and you'll have them at the, the you'll have them in this moment. So this is sort of the first take on how to deal with environments. Um, I have some thoughts I wanted to play around with with uh, partial persistence and the ways to maintain all of the myriad environments that uh, mini counter and, and those sort of things need to maintain. And so this is the it's kind of the first step to getting it up to right up and running right. Um, I have no idea if I'm actually going to get around to the point where I fully have a logic programming language. I mostly just want to play with the toys, the parts. Um, so if I'm going to look up um, i and an n of ij, n of jk, so these variables are going to be numbered from the end of the of the thing, so that way they remain stable as I continue to extend the environments. So I need to first subtract um, j minus i. So just i is greater than k equals nothing. So if they're past the ones we've actually manifested, then this this found nothing. Um, now I'm going to do is k minus i. We're going to look up in the spine. And now we've been flipped to the correct orientation. So now, const j t x is i is less than j. Look up tree i t. use case this would be considered a bug because I should not be looking for environment variables that are <clears throat> older than my environment or I've got a real problem um, and if otherwise something like uh, skip that part on that thing and look up in the tree this can now actually fail I'm going to need to pass in the J as well. Look up anything at a tip and I just say nothing. Um, I have a size of the complete tree. underscore node. So I look up position zero in a actual bin node. Bin A, it's A. Look up I, J, bin A, L, R. I'm going to divide j divided by 2. So 
a j divided by two. If I let's see here, i underscore zero underscore i underscore. Let's do this just all in one thing. This is i is less than or equal to j prime plus one. Look up tree L. We're going to walk down the left hand side of the tree and we are going to use position i. I think it's less than or equal to j because we've got the plus one, so it's not less than j plus one. This is going to be logical. I'll have to test. Look up tree i, j prime l. Otherwise, we're in the right hand branch. i minus j prime. Minus 1. j prime r, or something like that. So we're doing our lookups. We're trying to find that position. And uh, I'm cursing and I have my bin underscore story. In theory, it gives me a cons, a cons gap thing, some kind of lookup. and variables to the semi group endo this thing to x's all right that actually type checked um, I don't know that I made this showable did I that's showable that's showable now Cons one, no. <clears throat> Cons look up variable zero. Look up variable one. I got my logic backwards somehow. I'm going to do the error bad programmer one. Variable out of 
uh, the variable zero. All right. I want to find the zeroth variable in here. I have k many of them. If there are more than I have represented, which is i is greater than k, then this is nothing. Otherwise, we look up spine, k minus i. This is a uh, minus one. Find me variable zero. Find me variable one, which should be the nothing. Find me variable two, which should be the nothing, but it should be, that should actually fail as well. failing if i is greater than k then there's nothing here if i is all the way greater than j so there's a buffer between j and k that is many okay variables too fresh look up negative one variable not fresh enough okay Do variably impossible. And then, in theory, I should be able to give you something like a var. Give me an int, and I'll give you a lens into my environment of A. It's down to a maybe A. prime for all functors f and var is going to follow the lookup logic almost exactly J. Because I'll be using these for actual. Hey, it seemed better than incurring the dependency just now. You know, even I feel the size, the weight, the weight of lens. Um, although I'll get there eventually. This is just me experimenting with whether I like this API at all. N by J. Look up spline and JK. Bar spline. And some F. Oh, <laughs> you're right, I did. Um, lens maybe a... So what are we doing here? <coughs> we ever reached the nil, we've already screwed up. 
so I can't appear there anyways. Here we're going to do a lookup in the tree. I, J, F, T, continue on with the lookup in the spine. Spine const JT F mapped over that. Then we just have this guy. This is wrong. Let's at least get this stuff down here. Uh, bin underscore is actually the name of the data constructor. There is a, there are two data constructors for bin. There's a bin and a bin underscore that way I don't have to have a maybe in the data type here. So it reduces the heap representation one frame or one, one indirection. Probably doesn't matter, except for the fact that I'm using the, this little smart constructor for bin underscore so that I'll never have a bin underscore tip tip that collapses it down to a tip. So this bin smart constructor also fits into that framework. So tweak is wrong. So tweak's gonna take I and J, I think.
Tweak anything and nothing is tip. Tweak zero. tree um, with just the path to the ith element instantiated so there'll be log n bins or log i bins um, so, log, so i equals j yeah this is going to be my bin Tweak I J prime so the so honestly once I've selected the handled the nothing case everything else here is kind of recursive so I could do I zero J zero just A zero or go I zero I J A So now we know we're never going to deal with the nothing case again. So tweak has a helper that does its recursive spinning. Um, so go i j a. By zero, we are bin tip tip. Y is less than or equal to j. We are going with i j prime a. Otherwise, we are going, and when I'm done with this thing, we're going to do a bin underscore, but now I'm going to be smart about it. Oh, no, I don't have to do a lowercase bin underscore because I know that this will put a bin in there because there's something going in. Bin underscore this thing tip. Bin underscore tip. We're gonna go I minus J prime minus one down the right hand side with J prime set up. <coughs> and that should be that should be tweak. Okay, so now tweak is fixed in theory. And we have to deal with the lookups where we actually find them. And yes, a Haskell programmer, at least most of the time. Nice to meet you, Johnson McBig. Uh, what do we have here? Lookup tree. IJ, we have to pass the F down anyways. I think part part of why I've been doing these streams is to help get folks uh, some perspective on the inside of a Haskeller's brain, or at least this particular slightly odd Haskeller's brain. Um, because a lot of people like look at Haskell code as an artifact that has been produced and not at the process that gets you there. Um, this is going to be a bin underscore. And we know that... Oh, I don't know, actually, that this is going to be fancy, so I have to use the bin underscore thing. We're going to go to the left-hand branch. L prime. We leave R intact. And over here, we're going down the right hand branch. I 
be sure. not bins actually because we're leaving a intact <coughs> it's down here that I have to do that logic So this will, if you were to delete something, let it collapse the tree on the way up the root. And good night, Ollie. I'm probably going to wrap up in a, probably 20 minutes here when my wife gets home. She's off working with her clients. I kind of snuck online. Bin my LR. No oh, prime, I believe all of that. That looks plausible to me. So this is not a lookup tree, this is a... Oops. Undo whatever damage I just did. The var tree thing. So that's recursing through var. We've, we're building the limbs recursively. Uh, this is the kind of thing where um, the, the, the Yoneda trick for fusing from lens might be useful. Um, because we're doing lots and lots of separate F maps as we go through the structure, <clears throat> but we're only ever finding one thing. theory as long as you only ever give me in band things I will give you a lens we can start working on tweak something 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 equals go I zero J zero a zero F with maybe. Bar spine, some number F. And if JK, K minus I minus zero, that's fine. That's the same logic as the lookup. So what do we have here? Variable not in scope R98. What did I screw up? We're going down the right hand side. Go I J A. Oh, we don't have an R, we're just we know the value we're going to insert.
bar tree ijf. I need the f. I should be guanchi uh, ghid skewed at hs. Uh, sure, feet a lot. I would disagree, but uh, you're welcome to hold your own opinion. I find that category theory doesn't lead to excessive abstraction by my view, but uh, this is nothing. Why are we saying this? Oh, this is just nothing. We're going to F nothing, and then we're going to... Tip F map over go IJA. A zero with chip. What's wrong there? Why do these types have to match up? Go IJ. The result of calling go IJA is three. It's going to be a tree A. Um, bin L tip, that's fine. Wait, this isn't F map. This is just Go isn't returning something in a functor. of just a no f of nothing sweet so now we have the lens for var tree um one g let's give it lens as a dependency cry at our build times I'm going to have to bail. Um, sorry about that. Someone's at the door. And it's probably time for me to drop off anyways. So thank you, folks. I will uh, try and pick this up another time.